Welcome back to Think Tech. This is Talking Tax with Tom, Tom Yamachika, the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. And today we're going to talk about uh, Kurt Kruvella's uh, special mission with regard to film credits in Hawaii. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thank you, Jay. I'm glad to be here. I looked up uh, Kurt Pavella, and wow, he is a very publicity-minded person. I um, mean, he is. You, if you Google him, you get a lot of hits. He's he's always uh, on a platform somehow. But this one seems to be a continuing um, controversy that he has created. Uh, can you talk about it? Can you talk about how the film credit works and what's wrong, uh, as far as he's concerned? Let me let me just kind of you know start by saying. Uh, you know, Kurt Favela ran and won as a Republican, okay? And he's one of, uh, he used to be the only Republican in the Senate. Now there are two, uh, him and Senator Awa, which interestingly enough means that uh, because of, you know, the uh, policy that there be uh, bipartisanship on every uh, every committee, in the legislature, he's on pretty much all of the committees, including, uh, importantly for us here at to Talking Tax, the Senate Ways and Means Committee. Hmm. Um, isn't that uh, Donovan De La Cruz's committee? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Senator De La Cruz chairs the committee, but uh, uh, Favela does have a seat on it. He apparently uh, has been persuaded by uh, the Teamsters that there are problems with the uh, the Hawaii movie and TV production tax credit. By way of background, we've had the, the movie and TV production tax credit in place for a long time, since I believe 1988. You know, it was in some years more, some years less, but the basic idea is uh, that when movie and TV productions come here, uh, they're allowed a tax credit based on what they spend uh, here uh, well, not necessarily here, but it has to be subject to our local tax, uh, either uh, general excise tax, use tax, or income tax. The Teamsters believe that's not enough. And they kind of made a show of it this, you know, this past session. We, we talked earlier about uh, what happened with the, um, uh, with the, with the film credit bill, uh, with uh, the Senate Ways and Means Committee, uh, grabbing something relatively unrelated, uh, shoving a bunch of these changes that uh, the Teamsters wanted into the bill. And when the House didn't hear it, uh, they took one of the House bills and they basically shoved all those provisions in that one, you know, much to the consternation of the House committee. What did it provide? Well, for, for one thing, the, the bill provided differential tax credit rates depending on who's, uh, whether you have local payroll or out-of-state payroll. Hmm, let me stop you there and say, gee, that sounds like a violation of the United States Constitution Commerce Clause. Yeah, it probably is. I mean, I thought so. Uh, the Deputy Attorney General thought so. Um, but did that uh, mollify the Ways and Means Committee? I don't think so. But let's go back to uh, Favela's film feud. So it's it's now after the adjournment of the legislature. On May 31st, there was a press conference held at the Capitol regarding that, that uh, movie and TV production tax credit. And two of the main speakers were uh, a gentleman from the Teamsters, a gentleman named Kevin Holu, and Senator Favela. Now, Mr. Holu's basic point was that there weren't enough local teams to members work on the productions. So they wanted, uh, and, it, and it's no secret we've been just talking about this, they have, you know, tested, they, they testified in favor of the, uh, the predecessor to the, um, uh, you know, the bills that we're, we were just talking about urging them to amend the legislation by adding in safeguards to ensure that productions are engaging with local unions and hiring Hawaii residents and, and utilizing Hawaii-based businesses for goods and services. Safeguards sounds like a euphemism to me. Yeah, it, it actually is mandates. 
it's not safeguards, it's mandates. Mm -hmm. That's what they that's what they put they wanted to put in. That's what they did put in. And and of course, at that um press conference, Senator Favela got up to speak and he had his own uh views about how the state's administering the credit. This is Hawaii, he said. People are standing in line to film here. But when you get one person making the decisions, that's the discouragement. That's the guys discouraging people to come here. So what did he mean by that? Who's the one person? And what are the decisions? Isn't it just simply in the law? Uh, his beef was with uh, Donnie Dawson, the head of the Hawaii Film Office. He has been the head of the Hawaii Film Office for mm, like 20, 25 years. Yeah. But to emphasize the point, he filed a formal personnel complaint against uh, Ms. Dawson, and that's kind of working its way through the Department of Department of Business and Economic Development right now. Saying what? Saying that um, uh, Ms. Dawson misled legislators uh, by describing what the bill would do. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, dur during the the you know the time that the um, when the, when the bill was out, uh, the MPAA among others uh, had some complaints about the bill. We did too. You know, we had some concerns about constitutionality over the Commerce Clause, as you just mentioned. Basically, you know what the Commerce Clause says is that we in the U.S. are supposed to be one big happy family. So you have, you know, one state, another state. We're all, we're all in this together. We're in, you know, we're, we're paddling the same canoe. We're all one ohana. So uh, one state shouldn't be discriminated against commerce coming from another state. But that's exactly what the bill did. Mm -hmm. And it was very explicit about it. So. Is that what uh, Donnie Dawson uh, was charged with? Of testifying that it violated the Commerce Clause? Uh, no, I think she made some other points that, that were kind of consistent with what the MPAA was saying. I believe in, in Civil Beats coverage, uh, they did have, you know, a copy of the handout that uh, Ms. Dawson gave Senator Favela and others, just, just as an explainer to what the, you know, what the industry position was. Now, let, me, let me boil this down just as far as our conversation is concerned up to this point. This controversy um, is about um, requiring local, local union labor in violation of the Commerce Clause of the United States Constitution. And so one side of the controversy is, yeah, we should have local union labor in violation of the clause. And the other side is we shouldn't because it violates the clause and I suppose other um, industry considerations. Is that the, is that the controversy? Well, there's two parts to it. One of them is that part, right? And of course, Senator Favela's, Favela's um, rejoinder is uh, that working with mainland companies managing studios and production at Hawaii, you don't want to have a problem. Everything should be local. It's our land. It's our place. It's our people. That's that's basically I, his argument. I saw him quoted for that in the Civil Beat article. That was extraordinary. That that's what he's saying, but we do have the commerce clause, and I, I don't know if, if if Mr. Favela recalls this, but when he was first sworn in as a senator, he had to take an oath to support and defend both the Constitution of Hawaii and the Constitution of the United States. Well, the Constitution of Hawaii calls for compliance with the Constitution of the United States. It doesn't really have to, but it does. And, and Article 16, Section 4 of the Hawaii Constitution calls for every lawmaker to take that oath. Mm -hmm. so, so is he alone on this, um, or are there others who join him from the legislature? Well, I mean, obviously there were others in Ways and Means Committee who were kind of singing the Teamsters tune, right? Mm -hmm. It takes more than one person to, you know, to, to do those kind of legislative maneuvers. But... But but you have to kind of look at the, you know, the reality, and, and the reality isn't that people are lining up on the door. I mean, uh, uh, 
lining up to film here. Do you remember Jason Momoa, Hawaii-born actor? Mm -hmm. He made it one of his life projects to film a Hawaiian historical drama. Chief of War. Chief of War is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And that series is indeed being shot now in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, part of the film was shot in Hawaii and all of the major Hawaiian islands, but as it turns out, a good part of the movie is shot in New Zealand. A number of the principal cast members are New Zealanders, not Hawaiians. Why? It turns out that New Zealand offers international productions a production grant of up to 25% on qualifying New Zealand production expenditures. That's better than a tax credit. I, it, apparently it is, because uh, according to the producer of Chief of War, a gentleman named Brian Keaulana, he said, to survive, we had to go to Aotearoa, which is New Zealand, to survive for this. Uh, but by keeping the tax credit, it would give us the opportunity to keep us guys at home. Let's, let's hypothetical. Um, suppose this bill passes, okay? And we have more local teamsters staffing these films to the extent there are films here in Hawaii. If and, they are, if the films come here. Well, I'm assuming that, okay? Well, yeah, that's a big assumption now. Yeah, because okay. because if, if you jack up uh, the mandates, if you jack up the you know the price of coming here, what are, what are what are the productions going to do? They're going to go to New Zealand, just like Chief of War did. There's many considerations, but let's assume, of course, they do. Are, yeah. they, they they do come here. Let's assume, mm -hmm. and this is a really big possibility. I mean, a, an encouraging possibility. There's enough talent right here in Hawaii to make films. Okay, except they, you know, they would have to use Teamster help. Lots of it to make their film here in Hawaii. Is that competitive, or would that be would that also force local filmmakers to go elsewhere? That's that's another dimension, and that definitely needs needs, needs to be considered. I mean, if you are going to tell uh, you know the big productions uh, that if you if you're going to film here, you need. Hawaii needs to have the whole enchilada. Then, uh, either they they go elsewhere, or they come here and kind of suck up all the local resources. In which case, the smaller productions may get starved out. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The smaller productions are the ones I would care about most. But I don't think this bill would would help local productions. This bill would, you know, impose a de facto obligation on every production to use teams to help um, and to have more help. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the result is that nobody could make a film economically. And to the extent uh, Hawaii might attract either local or out-of-state business, uh, it, it would mm, diminish. The other thing is, and I would like to spend a few minutes with you on this, um, it is troubling, is it not, to look from the outside in and see this obvious attempt by Favela, who is you know, essentially working for the union, manipulate the law um, so as to help the union and uh, position the union to have more union members, more work, more local union members working on films that are made here. This is, this is troubling in the sense that um, it doesn't look good from the outside. Uh, from the outside, it looks like um, you know we have a problem in in incentivizing movie making in Hawaii, and that and the people who um, should be uh, like Donny Dawson, who should be incentivizing, who should be managing um, the efforts of filmmakers to make films in Hawaii, are not really in charge. Um, and and there's a statement here um, about our willingness to accommodate filmmakers of all kinds from Hawaii and elsewhere, when you have the union running things and you have uh, you know, shouting and screaming and lots of newspaper articles uh, about favela. And I'm, and I'm thinking that if I'm a filmmaker in Los Angeles, I, I would say, gee, you know, we've had problems in Hawaii before. We've had problems with tax credits in Hawaii. Um, it's, it's not completely predictable. We've had problems with the Teamsters before. 
if I'm in LA, um, I would say, um, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go to New Zealand right away. Um, the weather's good in Hawaii, but gee whiz, this environment is really not made for filmmaking. Yeah, no, I mean, there are, uh, you know, we're not an island unto ourselves. We have competition. We have Puerto Rico. We have uh, we have New Zealand. We have other places in um, you know tropical climates. Okay, and and of course there's the green screen, right? Any place, in even in Los Angeles, can be made to look like Hawaii. And there's animation that looks like a green screen. You know, um, the technology is extraordinary now. You know, in the old days, a green screen would, would have um, visible issues to an audience, but now green screens are so effective, you can't tell the difference. And beyond that, you can make the green screen better and better with animation. And again, you can't tell the difference. So there are so many options that are cheaper, that are open to filmmakers now. The technology really covers it all. And don't forget AI, Tom, because AI can generate scenes and backgrounds and, you know, all kinds of things that will help a filmmaker create uh, an alternative um, set and scenery. So um, this is really foolish, not only to make an unconstitutional bill and, and push it and shout about it, but also um, to tell the world about our attitudinal problems. Yeah, I, I think it's... Um very dangerous to you know make broad uh statements about insularism that uh you know hawaii is hawaii and nothing and nothing else matters um it's 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 kind of like make america great again but on a smaller scale yeah we have so many issues like this um you know the the whole affair the oha attempt to build a 40 story condominium on uh, Kaka'ako Makai. I saw that um, there are those who would stop the uh, improvement of the Puna Geothermal Venture. And um, I, I'm sure that you recognize that the Mauna Kea project with the 30 meter telescope, which would be a tremendous item for prestige for Hawaii, it has been stopped. Uh, against all the findings, all the courts, all the arbitration, it ain't going anywhere right now. And it probably is dead make mort. And, and so, I mean, we have these issues where um, people want to advance, um, how shall I characterize this, local um, partisan issues in order to um, make it hard for people to do business, make projects, make progress. And, and it seems to be happening more and more. Think of the ferry. Think of the super ferries, another one. These projects all got stuck because of partisan issues like this one. Absolutely. And if we want to make, uh, you know, Hawaii a business-friendly place, if we want to attract capital from outside, which is what these film film projects do, okay, I, I think we have to be accommodating, at least to some degree. Well, I, mean, I don't think this is over, Tom. Of course it's not. Um, this is just a... Uh, just a symptom, not the not the disease. And it's it's really ultimately damaging to the film industry here, which is a great possibility for us. We should be inviting them from hither and yon. We should have films all over the lot. It makes so much money, and it and it sells Hawaii, doesn't it? Yeah, and uh, importantly, it brings in capital from outside of what we now have. I mean, we've right. always uh, complained. I mean, we've we've heard lots of complaints over the years that Hawaii's capital is short. Well, uh, the answer is to, to get entities or businesses outside of Hawaii to invest in Hawaii, and that and movie production is one of them. And the other kinds of capital, capital that come in for the telescope, capital that uh, come in for um, for the, the super ferry. I could go on. All these are stopped and the capital doesn't come in and you start counting them up on your fingers and toes and it's billions and billions of dollars that have been locked up or rejected. You talk about Donnie Dawson and some of the filmmakers coming down and opposing this bill. 
And of course, uh, you know, the Pax Foundation opposed the bill. But you know, is there an organization that would say, wait a minute, this is this is unhinged. It's not legal and it's not good for us. Um, is there an organization, kind of a chamber of commerce organization, that would come down and oppose a bill like this and, and tell it like it is? Well, I mean, supposedly that's one function of the uh, MPAA producers or directors. It's more than tax and it's more than filmmaking. It's inviting offshore capital to come here. Yes, it should be managed. And I think tech had a very interesting program about managing offshore capital uh, 10 years ago. And I thought that was really important to understand it from that point of view. Um, we, we, we need somebody to A, uh, advocate for bringing offshore capital here and B, managing it effectively. Well, I mean, supposedly that's what we, we uh, look to our governor for. You know, we, we, we want our governor there saying, this is the policy of the state. This is what we want to attract. You know, we, we love films and uh, we we totally support the industry's uh, use of Hawaii to, to, uh, to promote Hawaii. Um, come on down. We'll, we'll make we'll make life comfortable for you. We'll, you know, we'll show you our local spirit. We'll show you our hospitality. Right, and, and one of the, one of the side benefits of all of that is that that our budding filmmakers from the Academy for Creative Media, other places in the university, um, you know, all these filmmaking organizations that are small, they're low capital, small organizations in Hawaii trying to make films would. Um, would rub shoulders um, with the you know more serious, more heavily capitalized uh, producers from the mainland, and and a they could learn a lot. They could even just watch, but they could get jobs too. They could learn a lot and and um, and make a real industry here. Well, I mean, what happens, you know, is that is that local um, people who want to get a job in filmmaking, uh, wind up going to the mainland. I think there should be a countervailing bill here in the next session uh, that would further encourage them, not reject them. And at least they'll have two hands clapping, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, we have a, a film credit that's, uh, for better or for worse, uh, survived more than 25 years. Why aren't we using it? We should be. We should be using. It. We should be extending the the sunset date. We should be, maybe, you know, juicing up the percentages a little bit. But uh, but let's not do you know stupid things. Well, I would. You know, it's it's a it's a marketplace thing. If we find that um, producers going around us, going to Puerto Rico and uh, and New Zealand and what have you, and, and other places in Asia, I should add. Uh, with, yeah, yeah that's, that's that's not their fault. No, it's just, the economics it's just, are there. That's right. So we have to get into the mix and be more competitive. It's that simple. Yeah. And it, it's a combination of things. It's not only increasing the film credit, um, but it's a developing an attitude. You know, the aloha spirit, if you mentioned, um, where, where we, we demonstrate that we care about them and we support them and we help them. And, and, we, and we try to get, um, you know, uh, jobs and internships and the like so that local people can learn from them. It's a very, high, as you said, it's a very highly technical business now. You, you know, you, you, can't, you can't learn it by not, by not getting close to it. You have to get close to it. Yeah, we ought to be concentrating on like people like Chris Lee, who were in the industry he, you know, he, and, and have come, come here to uh, impart you know, his vast knowledge to uh, local people who want to get into the industry. Um, we ought to be listening to him more. We need to kind of pick the industries that we want to help. Uh, given that we've already picked this one, we really should be, you know, accommodating uh, if we can. You know, we, we shouldn't be trying to kick them out. We, we, should, we shouldn't be taking the attitude that, oh, they're going to come here anyway, because they won't. And, and we've, we're finding this out more and more, uh, as we've seen with Jason Momoa's experience. They'll, they'll go elsewhere. They, they don't have to stay here. Yeah. 
and and we should realize that and we should realize that we're in a competition uh to attract and keep industries like that thank you tom important discussion thank you very much i, I hope that uh, people get the message on this thank you aloha Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.